This build is weird, but the more I think about it, the more spicy it gets. It's a build that's very good on paper, but does cost quite a bit of SP investment, and ironically for such a weird build, Chloe stands out to me as one of the most, if not the most effective user for this build. So let me introduce you to this crazy build that involves the Azure Twins, and arguably the worst weapon type in Fire Emblem Engage. Arts to create a true damage quad punching machine. I'm ready to dig in. Arts are a type of weapon with no weapon type disadvantage and act similarly to brave weapon archetypes, being able to attack twice in a single combat round before the enemy can act. Arts have the advantage of being lighter than all the other brave weapons so you'll receive less of a speed penalty and they have innately high might on the weapon with the S rank Divine Art coming at 11 might and at plus 5 refine becoming a 16 might weapon. For comparison, a Brave Axe comes at plus 6 might before refinement, but there is a catch to Arts. Unlike every other weapon in the game that scales off of strength or magic, Arts scales off of the sum of both strength and magic divided by 2. So even if you have high strength and a plus 5 refine on an Art, you may end up still doing less damage than every other Brave weapon. And this is where Chloe comes in. Chloe's magic growth is innately higher than her strength growth, with a base of 35 magic compared to her 25 strength. More than likely, Chloe will have an even spread of strength and magic, but not excelling in either. Which fits really well for Arts. But the synergies don't end there. Her personal skill adds plus 2 damage after damage calculation if you have 2 characters of opposite genders adjacent to each other within 2 spaces of Chloe when she goes into combat. With good use of chain attacks, this will be an easy requirement to meet, and then we can even add Alir's personal skill to it for 3 additional damage for Chloe to do per attack. Since both personal skills add the damage after damage calculation, we essentially have a unit who can employ a brave attack with plus 5 unmitigated damage added on top of the weapon damage per hit. This may not seem like a lot, but if you quad an enemy, that's plus 20 damage just added on top. Now we'll add the other ingredient into the mix, the Emblems of Azure Twin. This Emblem Ring's special ability revolves around switching between Luna and Soul or Erika and Ephraim respectively. With Erika equipped, the unit will deal extra damage based on 20% of the enemy's defense. So let's say you're fighting somebody who's tanky with 30 defense. Whatever damage you end up doing, add plus 6 to that, just flat out. So now we're looking at a potential true damage of 11 per hit. We're going to be doubling before the enemy can react, so that's plus 22 extra damage. And if we quad hit, that's plus 44 extra damage, before taking into account other buffs and debuffs within the game. On the other hand, if Chloe needs to heal herself, she can switch to soul, and if she initiates combat, she'll heal for 30% of the damage she deals per hit, while still gaining a damage boost from Ephraim's bravery skill. At maximum bond level, the bravery skill will offer a plus 5 damage increase, making the solar brace stronger than the lunar brace versus lower defense enemies. The azure twin ring also gives plus magic, plus dex, and plus luck, all which will benefit this class. Sounds good so far, right? Well, there's one major issue with all of this. Martial Masters, the only class with an S rank in arts, have a speed cap of 28. This is the second lowest for advanced classes in the game for speed, with the lowest being generals with a speed cap of 17, and the highest being 49 from Swordmasters and Fogados' advanced class, with the average for advanced classes being 36 speed. This may not be an issue at all, but I can already smell some inflated speed stats in maddening late game, even though I personally have not been there yet. And if you want to do PvP, it may be hard for us to quad hit our enemies or even prevent being doubled. Fortunately for us, we can make use of some weapons and inheritable skills to even the odds. Before I continue, if you're having a good time so far, please leave a like and consider subscribing for more Fire Emblem Engage content. Thanks. There is an A rank art called Flashing Scrolls, which gives the user plus 5 speed for the trade off of taking 5 extra damage whenever they get hit. With this build, that won't matter too much because at max bond level, Erica's gentility skill will eliminate the drawback, or change to a different art like the divine art or the shielding art, which gives plus 5 defense. With the Flashing Scrolls, the class is now at 33 speed, and we can add Speed Taker or even Speed plus 5 to bring that up another notch. Speed Taker allows us to ramp up to plus 10 speed by the time you get to the boss, bringing this build up to a max potential of 40 speed, making the build now viable for alacrity, allowing you to combo the enemies with 4 hits before they can even react. For maximum damage, you're going to want to switch over to the Divine Fist, which will pair you down to a respectable 38 max speed for anything else. Engravings that give more might, avoid, and crit like Marth, Sigurd, or the 3 Lords engravings are all good options for this build. I especially like the crit chance just because you're going to be hitting 4 times before the enemy can react, so all of those 4 times will have a chance of proccing a crit. And the animation looks sick. 
So let's recap. At max potential, you'd be quad hitting everything for effectively plus 16 true damage per hit in the right scenarios. If you need even more damage, engaging with the Azure Twins will give you both the buffs of Solar Brace and Luna Brace, allowing you to tap into the damage bonus from Luna as well as Bravery. Now, if endgame enemies end up all having plus 40 speed and maddening, this build can still be effective, but we'll have to employ hit and run tactics instead of quad hitting. So we'll be switching out the plus speed and alacrity for canter plus and choosing between plus magic or plus avoid depending on how much you value offensive capabilities versus well-roundedness. Now we also go magic instead of strength just because this class has access to staves which means more magic equals better healing for other units. Speaking of staves, this also means Chloe can now disrupt enemies with freeze, silence, obstruct, and even rewarp herself out of dangerous situations. In the same context, plus avoid means you can now rewarp Chloe into enemy territory without too much worry. If you do decide to teleport her into enemy territory though, keep in mind that you do not get the weapon's brave properties if you don't initiate the attack. So if Chloe is not fast enough during the enemy phase, she's only going to be hitting once without all the true damage bonuses that we talked about earlier. Another bonus of the Martial Master class is that they are a chi ada, meaning that you'll be able to utilize chain guards if you have them around. And if Chloe decides to use chain guards, she's going to take up to 20% damage and allows her to be healed by other units which will end up healing any adjacent allies for 50% of the amount that Chloe gets healed for. These two factors are a pretty nice utility for an otherwise unga bunga build. I had my eye on you. Which leads me to ask, what are your thoughts so far on this build? Are you going to try it out, or do you prefer a different setup for your Chloe? Let us know in the comments below. Me personally, I wasn't super into the idea of this build starting out, but after making this video, I'm definitely going to give this build a try once I reach the last leg of the game. Martial Masters have some awesome animations and it would be a real shame if I didn't build one on my playthrough, especially one with this much potential. On another note, the first weekly Relay Trial community post was a huge success. Big shoutouts to everyone who left codes and helped others clear Relay Trials and netting everyone some real awesome rewards like permanent stat boosters. I'll be making an attempt to post every Friday for the foreseeable future, so if you're interested in clearing or participating in some jolly cooperation so you can get some nice rewards as well, make sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications to all so you don't miss out whenever the post goes live. Again, thank you for participating. I'm really happy that others who may not have had the opportunity to play this mode are given the chance to and you all made it possible. And that makes me super happy that everyone's included. In maddening mode, most bosses hit hard and are too fast to double. With a simple build and very low to no SP investment, you can turn your IV into a maddening mode boss killer. To learn more about the build, check out this video on screen right now. My name is Varsana, and I'll see you in the next video.